concerning all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. And until the day in which he was received up, after that he had given commandment through the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also showed himself alive after his passion or suffering or death, 
by many proofs, appearing unto them by the space of forty days, and watch it, and speaking the things concerning the kingdom of God. After he had been with them for three years, or been on earth for three years, and the apostles had been with him the most of that time, teaching them and instructing them, now after his death, burial, and resurrection, 40 days, he's appeared off and on in different circumstances and situations, but always, always with the goal in mind of teaching them concerning the kingdom of God. Now, if anyone could explain the kingdom of God, it would surely be Christ, wouldn't it? And if anybody was sincere and wanted to know what God wanted, it would be the apostles. But yet, watch, watch what happens. And being assembled together with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, you heard from me, for John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Now you just wait. Don't you try to explain anything. You wait until you receive the Holy Spirit. And He'll come not in many days. Well, ten days later, He's going to show up. But watch this, what they say. They therefore, when they were come together, asked Him, saying, Lord, dost Thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? They still haven't got it. They're still thinking earthly kingdom. As he's facing the cross, on the way there, James and John and their mother come to Jesus and say, Bid one of these my sons sit on the left and one on the right when you come in your kingdom. What's well, stop and think. Our president is just been inaugurated and he's just selected a cabinet. Individuals who are given key positions in his administration. Well, I want one of these boys to sit on one side and one on the other. She's thinking, they're thinking, earthly kingdom. And it's not until the Holy Spirit comes to direct them and guide them that they get this all figured out. That's why they needed assistance. That's why it's so important that you and I realize that what we're reading here is God's will about these things and not man's imagination. When I gave, uh, you, got, you got a chart. I think I promised you this morning and we got it printed, right? And down here at the bottom is a chart called dispensational lizard. What that means is if you've have the Schofield Reference Bible, or if you have any of these charts and you hear about the rapture, some of those pictures that I showed you earlier, this is the chart that you will see. I, I suggest that you go into any denominational bookstore in Lakeland, two or three over there. If you walk in and ask them about end time material, you will probably receive something like this. It would be a large chart that is trying to explain to you what things are all about. Now, if you look at that chart, you see a dotted line over there before the cross. And it comes over here and it lands at the millennium. And that's what I was talking about this morning when I said Jesus failed according to this theory. He didn't start his kingdom. He came to do that, but he couldn't do it because the Jews rejected him. So it's been postponed. And it won't happen until he comes back again. Then that thousand year over here, and then you have the final judgment, resurrection, final judgment, and all that stuff in eternity. So you've got to have this thousand year period of time. And we have studied in the Old Testament those passages that all pointed to his death, burial, and resurrection. Now there's a thing in there about him starting an earthly kingdom and reigning for a thousand years.